Good evening, I'm John Allen Namu. Tonight, we take you to Kilifi County, where cases of teenage pregnancy have become all too common. However, much as the young girls of this county are feeding into these growing statistics, we're looking at the issue from the point of view of the young men who've also had to sacrifice their futures when their sisters do fall pregnant. This is Perspective, and the show starts right now. First things first though, let's focus on a headline that grabbed the nation's attention last Friday and held it throughout the weekend. Here's this week's headline versus bottom line. This week's headline, Mutula Kelonzo Jr. trounced all competition to claim the Makweni senatorial seat in emphatic fashion. The victory was widely celebrated by the Coalition for Reforms and Democracy's leaders as a sign of the coalition's popularity. Here though is the bottom line. Just a week before the by-election, Cord's leadership had spent quite a bit of time criticizing the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, the IABC, over what it had perceived to be the IABC's subjectivity in handling the March election and its decision to bar Mutula Jr.'s sister, Kedi Kilonzo, from running for the Makweni seat. Whereas there are deep and legitimate concerns over what happened in March that need to be looked into seriously, going forward, should the legacy of our political parties be to criticize institutions without offering any solutions on how to make them better? The IEBC, as currently constituted, will be in charge of the 2017 election. Criticism ought to be given where it is deserved, but making the IABC a stronger, more efficient institution ought to be the direction in which this debate should be headed. Politicians aligned to all parties shouldn't just shower praise or castigate the IABC simply when it suits them. That's headline versus bottom line for this week. The journey to motherhood is one that we have featured before on Perspective, but from the point of view of women who have been unable to bear children. Tonight we take a look at an altogether different group, that of young girls in Kilifi, many of whom fall pregnant between the ages of 13 and 16, and the impact that falling pregnant this early is having, not just on the girls, but on their male relatives, young men whose lives have taken very drastic turns as they stand in to support their sisters. Tonight, Mashirima Kapombe debuts on Perspective with this touching piece titled, My Sister's Burden. It is a picture that has often brought tears amongst family members and viewers whose hearts break over another tale of an underage pregnant girl. A picture that almost always portrays the girl as a victim either cheated into giving in to a man's desire or simply forced to play along. But as this girl revealed in a story aired earlier on KTN, girls even as young as 14 want to fulfill womanly dreams a bit too early. <laughs> She is only seven months pregnant, but her future already seems decided for her, already dim with little or no hope of a new dawn. Her story is not different from Priscilla's, who hails from a county that has for years been synonymous with scores of tales of early marriages and pregnancies. Kilifi. Priscilla is a 17-year-old girl whose life took a different turn when she got pregnant even before high school. Last 
jamaa kan danganya kan papesa yake ndio nikapata mtoto nikawa bado niko shule Priscilla accepts that her choices were wrong and is now more focused on her child's future her brother, she says, is concentrating on school and she is glad he was not affected by her poor choices. Others, like Chengo Kashaha, Jackson Kombe, Nathaniel Masha and Hamisi Bakari, are just a drop in the ocean of boys in Kilifi County whose dreams of an education and bright future came to a standstill when their sisters tasted the forbidden fruit with no assurances of a secure future. Chengo works hard in a farm where he obtains his and his sister's children daily bread after she got pregnant twice with a man absconding responsibility. Yeah, just at, six. at his mother's home where his adopted sons reside, Chengo's mother agrees that her son was forced to carry a burden that was never his own a bit too early, even before her daughter's death. At only 22, Chengo too was forced by circumstances to marry a girl who would take care of his sister's children plus his aging mother. The two have a daughter who is an addition to the weighty responsibility on Chengo who is barely able to cater for his family on his income. For years, the girl child in Kilifi County has been portrayed as the victim in cases of childhood pregnancies. However, the boy child is another who has been forgotten in all these years, forced to carry burdens that were never his in the first place. Jackson Kombe is another who once had a promising future in school, always top of his class. He never would have imagined that he would end up frying cassavas for a living. At 29, Jackson had big dreams of one day becoming a wealthy businessman. But that dream has never been realized after not one, but both his sisters got children out of wedlock. <laughs> Na ngofika class 7 kwenda 8 ilikuwa na uzito kidogo kwa sababu familia ilikuwa inaniangalia mimi kwa upande wa chakula na pia sistangu alikuwa mjamzito ambayo ndo ilikuwa nimetegemea atakuwa tegemeo langu kuu na aka drop shule hasa ikawa mimi sina otherwise in his former primary school, teachers praised his good performance, eager for the day he would be successful and not only be a beacon for his family, but one that the younger boys and his classmates could look up to in the future. Upando wa shule likuwa na perform vizuri, hata watu wengi walikuwa wanajua ntegemeo, la pale kijijini kama kajinuni, ndo kijijini kwetu, watu wengi walikuwa wanajua ntegemeo, lakua at least usapata mtu ambaye ataenda university. Lakini kwa sababu nyingine, kwa sababu hizo za kuwa sasa haige wezekana niendelewe kwa masomo, ile ndoto yangu ikakufia hapo hapo. Up next we look further into the lives of young women and young men in Kilifi. Stay with Perspective. The problem of teenage pregnancies is not confined to the coastal region alone. In Western Kenya, this primary school made headlines for having 17 girls falling pregnant around the same time and the other gender that made it happen was not one that involved very old men as expected. Their fellow male pupils were among those responsible for the pregnancies. One of them was actually impregnated by a fellow pupil in school. Then uh, 12 uh, girls from the school, ranging from uh, standard 6 and 7, uh, aged between 14 and 15 years, uh, have also been married. They have eloped with the villagers from within. 
A similar story that seems to be reading from the same script happened at Kikambala Primary School in Kilifi County two years ago. Yani kama vile kumekuwa na mafuriko, kama vile kumekuwa na ajali, yani ilikuwa mshangao kwa kila mtu, kila mtu anajiuliza itakuwaje. Kwa ni kuna nini? Kwa chato kumina saba, mwaka umoja, shule moja. Kwa ni hasaki ni zaidi nene, ni wavlana ndio wana utundu mwingi ama ni wasichana wana utundu mwingi ama watoto wetu kwani kulikoni kuna nini Mganga says at the time they as community members took drastic measures in a bid to stop the pregnancies that had now become something that was close to the norm. The main suspects were mostly border border operators who are deemed to use their border borders as a trap for the girls who have to walk long distances to and from school. Mature talks on sex education plus arrests were made, but it almost seemed as though their efforts were fruitless. Miaka kuna mitatu hapo, huwa kuna utundu mwingi. Manake, wewe kama mtu mzima, unajaribu kumsedia ama unamsedia. Lakini ye ni kamba ye, unamuonea. Tukua tunawambia kwamba, ni lazima tuchukue hatuwa hii. Kuna watoto wengine walikuwa nasema, msimfunga huyo na mpenda, hata mkimfunga mimi, lazima huyo ndo mwume wangu. <laughs> Nganga's sentiments are backed up by Chela Kombe, one of Jackson's sisters whose choices reflect sharply on the challenges that community members face in trying to curb the teenage pregnancies. Chela got her first child at 16 while in Form 1. Kwa tokea kijana mwingine alikuwa kinisaidia. Alikuwa kinipatia hiyo pesa kidogo kidogo ya matumizi yangu ya shule mara nanulia sabuni ananipatia pocket money kama sikupewa na wazazi kule nyumbani poverty they all say is the main factor that leads the girls to fall into traps that they end up pulling their brothers into a life some of those carrying their sisters burdens say could have been avoided by better choices pengine wewe ungetegemea yeye aje kusaidie alafu ndio inakuwa ameweko jozito amekuja nyumbani anakaa inabidi sasa wewe unazorota kule shule baada ya kuwa sasa mngekuwa mnawasaidiana wakati mwingine inakubidi kama mimi sasa wewe unafanya kazi ndogo ndogo ukilisha hiyo familia kama tungelikuwa tuko vizuri yani tangekuwa sina mbara kuoa kwanza mimi ningekaa paka kama miaka 30 hivi ndio nikaoa the latest population statistics show the number of adolescent pregnancies have risen by leaps and bounds all over the world. About 16 million girls under the age of 18 years are said to give birth each year. 19 out of 100 in developing countries give birth by age 18. and three out of the 19 are 15 years and younger. This despite sex education being seemingly on a high in almost all schools across the country. Utundu na ujuaji mwingi pia katika kizazi hichi takita cha mishemishe ya mavijana mboa mebale umekua mwingi mno. Mashirika mengi ya kimataifa, mashirika siya ya kisirekali ya meshika uimizo mkubwa katika kukuza na kuweza kumsaidia mtoto wa kike. Lakini wanasahau ya kwamba huyu mtoto wa kike mara anapopata mimba ile mimba hiyo amepachikwa na mara nyingi tunaweza kudai ya kwamba ni watu wa umri mkubwa ama watu wazima lakini mara nyingi hiyo ni wanarika wanarika wenzake ndio wamempachika ile mimba 17-year-old Priscilla is one girl who is carrying her own burden by working at this salon where she is slowly receiving training on hairdressing, which she hopes to make a career out of that will enable her to take care of her son. This courtesy of an NGO that has reached out to girls like Priscilla who are ashamed of going back to school but have not lost hope in a brighter future. Uh, local child labor committees who we use in the community. They are like our gatekeepers. Watuna watumia kutuonyesha mtoto ambaye alie, adhirika zaidi na ambaye anaitaji msaada. And it is not just the girls who get a new lease of life with the NGO. 
at this garage, two young mechanics are learning the ropes of fixing greasy machines. At only 16, Nathaniel Marsha is here following a familiar tale. His sister indulged in sex way too early and left him with no choice but to fend for his family's and his sister's child. Nathaniel believes that had he continued with school, his family would be better placed in the future, but he has no choice as the situation at home called for immediate action. His sister got pregnant at 13 and although he cannot reverse the present, he hopes other girls will mind their brothers in their decisions. Na wende shule, hili sasa sipata na fasi ya kuenda kwa uli mvudana ama akapata na fasi ya kunene ya kupata wakatu wa kufikiri ya tumambo mengi. Asubuhi ni arauke shule, haende akija ni lunch, anakua, anakula vizuri, anarudi shule. Asa hata pata ule wakatu, kwa sababu wakipata ule wakatu wa kunene wa kufikiri ya uli mvudana toka sasa. Hana chakula, hana nini, ndio anapata ya ni mawazo mengi kufikiri ya nini. Asa ndio anaweza kufanya ilo jambo. And although parents in this county have for years bore the brunt of accusations that they are irresponsible with their children, Selina Zawadi, who is Priscilla's mother, says it is about time that girls accept that they too are to blame. <laughs> A section of teachers in affected schools say the shame of a sister getting pregnant while in school is sometimes too much for the brothers to bear. If uh, the, the, the sisters they give birth, they start giving birth at an early age, maybe they have two or three kids and uh, they are not employed and the parents are also not employed. So the boy will now come in and maybe go and look for employment to bring something to the family. Does talking about that and uh, the boy will not be active as uh, he was previously. And as the debate rages on use and distribution of contraceptives to teenage girls, the question remains, are girls too timid to see through a man's advances or have the girls been cushioned too much that they abscond responsibility as their brothers bear the brunt of their poor choices? But as you ponder on those, the stalled futures of Chengo, Jackson and Nathaniel are perhaps the answer to a forgotten gender that has been blamed year after year for the pregnancies, yet forgetting that there are others who are just victims who carry their sisters' burdens all through to their graves. Mashirima Kapombe for Perspective. This week on Your Perspective, we're asking how to deal with the increase in teenage pregnancies in the country. The parents can take any charge of speaking to, your, to, to their, their children about that. The most important thing I think is on the values that we instill in young people. 
Simply just focusing on, like, you know, like use the first priority is education. And even to tell people the right things about um, pregnancy, the right time to get married. We have to be serious with them because they are getting all these things in the internet. And you know very well that is very, very true. They are getting all these things from the radios, from the televisions, and parents are not taking it seriously to stop them from doing that. And again, those dates are given through the internet, through the, the um, uh, phones, and those things are needed to be done something. I don't know how. We need parents who are going to be the best uh, friends of the children. And by so doing, we'll have girls talk to their parents about whatever challenges they're going through. And I think we need parents to be available to the children always. And when they're available, children will not be having to be taught by other peers. Well, that's it for this week's edition of Perspective. But remember, the conversation doesn't have to end with the end of this week's show. You can tweet us on at KTN Perspective or tweet me on at John Alanamu and we will respond. Now, next week's Perspective falls on a very important date in the Kenyan calendar. August the 7th marks 15 years since that bomb blast in 1998 and Perspective will have a one-hour special on that from Mogadishu. So stay tuned for that. Well, we look forward to keeping your weekend perspective as always. I'm John Elenamu. Good night and stay safe.